Welcome to Under the Wings Helmet. I'm Kyle Simmons, and I'm joined by former Michigan and NFL offensive lineman Thomas Gwines and the host of the ASAP Elite podcast, Rob Penn. What up, dog? This week's episode is sponsored by Jabs Gym. Learn the fundamentals of boxing through high-intensity cardio and strength workouts with locations in Metro Detroit, the Eastern Market, Ferndale, and Birmingham. We would also like to thank Juke. You can purchase their gear at jukefootball.com. Last Saturday, the Wolverines defeated Indiana 52-7 at the Big House. J.J. McCarthy completed 14 of 22 passes for 222 yards and three touchdowns. Blake Crum had 52 yards rushing and two touchdowns, and Colson Loveland had three catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. This is the second straight game where the Wolverines scored 52 points and the seventh straight game this season where the defense held the opponent to 10 points or under. Thomas, uh, do you think this team is starting to find their groove? Uh, I think we definitely saw some hiccups. I definitely believe that uh, we have some improvement to do. Offensive line gave up four sacks uh, in one game. Up until that point, we had given up three sacks for the whole season. Mm -hmm. um, I think we did a really good job as far as showing overall balance. We had a 244-yard game in passing. Uh, mixed in with 163 yards total rushing. So that was a pretty balanced attack. But again, as I told uh, told you guys last week, Indiana was going to definitely come in here to play. They had something to prove. And, um, you know, they, they gave – the score doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, show the type of game that it was. We were definitely moving in quicksand during that first half, that first quarter. We had a couple big plays, started to get the momentum turned into um, our favor – and then we did what we normally do. Um, I think we started to win the war of attrition up front, and that's when things really started to pick up for the team overall. Again, Indiana, still a young team in my opinion. They still have a long way to go, but some of the miscues that we had during this game um, is definitely going to need to be worked out as we continue to move forward in the season. Going over to East Lansing, tough place to play. The crowd is super close to the bench. And um, obviously, they're going to play a spirited game, trying to keep the Paul Bunyan trophy uh, or trying to get the Paul Bunyan trophy back. So I'm just hoping that whatever's taking place up front with the offensive line, we get that worked out and uh, get back to rolling how we normally do. Well, from what I saw, it was a culmination of, you know, all the games, you know, that, that led up to this point. I like to point out the fact that, you know, we put up 52 points with 42 rushing attempts, you know, and only 23 passing attempts. It's pretty damn good. You know, and also, we scored on eight straight possessions. You know, especially to close out the game, we had Jack Tuttle to come in and uh, also throw a touchdown. You know, it looked like he was having a good time out there. Uh, like I said, once again, last week, I think our biggest step was one penalty for five yards. This week, two for 20. You know, we're playing mistake-free football. As I say, Thomas is watching the game from a different angle, being the fact that he's, uh, you know, a, a brother of the trenches. So, you know, he's able to see things and predict things that we're not able to see, especially as receivers. As we look at, you know, uh, are we uh, out of that 14 to 17, 222 yards and three touchdowns? You know what I'm saying? And everybody just matriculating the ball everywhere, you know, uh, taking advantage of the uh, blown coverages and being patient and not having to wing it 30 times. That's a beautiful thing, you know? So I get uh, I get it, man. I, I love it. We're playing good ball. Like I say, uh we're putting up scores in the Big Ten during the Big Ten season that we should have been putting in, you know, against a Bowling Green in Eastern Carolina. But, you know, I ain't tripping. <laughs> this Saturday, the number two ranked Michigan Wolverines travel to East Lansing to face Little Brother at Spartan Stadium. The Spartans are 2-4 and four on the season, 0-3 in the Big Ten, coming off their fourth straight consecutive loss at Rutgers. Thomas, as we all know, we have to throw out the records when it comes to this matchup. And little brother would love to spoil our season this weekend. So what are we going to do to make sure that that is not the case? Historically, you know, Michigan State week has always been a big week for us. Um, it's one of those red and green games. Uh, Michigan State, Notre Dame, as far as the green, the team from down south is the red. Uh, definitely one of those marquee games that we have down at Shambecker Hall. You know, the guys are going to tape up their helmets. Um as, as far as the uh, demonstration squad, 
will tape their helmets up in green tape. The the crowd noise is going to be off the hook. And, you know, again, this is about going in, and as Rob said, playing mistake-free football. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot. Let's continue to go out there and do what we have been doing. But, again, understanding, and just like you said, you got to throw the records out uh, the records out of the uh, equation because of the fact that it's a rivalry game. These dudes hate us down to their marrow. And to your point, they would love nothing but to come in and get that feather in their cap this year by knocking off the number two Wolverines. Um, but I personally, like I said, as long as the big fellas up front do what they need to do and we start grinding on these guys, um, I think we're going to be all right. Also, be aware of the trickeration. Again, their season's pretty much toast. So they have nothing to hold back right now. So anytime on, on the punt game, the field goal game, anything like that, I feel like these guys are going to probably break out some exotic looks, try to bring a little bit of trick trickeration to the game in order to get the momentum back on their side. And uh, But other than that, as long as we, we stay focused, stay play, mis play mistake-free football, let JJ be JJ, let the big boys up front do what they do, let my front seven continue to get home, I think we're going to have a great day. Paul Bunyan stay here in the friendly confines of Schembecker Hall. Rob, what do you think is going to be the key to getting this win? Now, last week, uh, Michigan State, you know, pushed Rutgers to the limits. That's a good football team. You gave them all that they can have it. You know, Rutgers had to come back, you know, within the last quarter, uh, down by, I want to say, uh, 15, you know, only winning by, by three. But the fact is that they were down. So this team is scrappy, man. You know, let's throw out the – fact that we are the least penalized team in the nation, you know, the top 10 scoring offense, and that we have, uh, let's see, 19 straight Big Ten victories, all that's out the window because this is where we were two years ago. You know, and I was sitting there watching it, and then I watched um, uh, Kenneth Walker, you know, just come anew and just, you know, uh, become a Michigan State legend on us, you know, ultimately setting us back to, you know, uh, get Georgia in that playing game, I mean, that playoff game. So, yeah, we can't take anything uh, light against them. Uh, another big fact that I want to bring to light, like too, is uh, 996. You know, that's where we are, sitting at most victories. Uh, four, four more games to go. Nothing shows me or tells me that this game will halt that momentum. You know, but at the same time, like you say, this is Michigan State. And this has been a thorn outside for the entire lifespan of us being Michigan fans. So, yeah, man, they're going to come out to play. Uh, ultimately, like I said, they're not built up front for the long grand and the, that, that boa constrictor that we're talking about. You know, they're, they're going to get caught up in it also. I'm, we're not going to put 50 on. It's not going to be a 50 to 7 game. I think that they might actually break over the 10 point ratio. So, we'll see how that goes. That's it. All about getting the W coming out of that piece healthy. Um, again, keep the trophies here in Ann Arbor. Come back to get old Ann Arbor healthy and sound, but make sure when we come back, we come back with a W. That's all I really care about at this point. And to your point, Rob, you know you know they're going to come out throwing their best shots based off of all the turmoil they've had during the offseason, everything that they've been dealing with as a team and, and just as young men. What other, what greater galvanizing point could they have this year by knocking off the Wolverines? So, again, I'm sure Coach Harbaugh and the rest of the assistant coaches uh -uh, will have these guys fired up and ready to go. And the beautiful thing about, I don't think we really give enough attention to the fact that there's so many former Michigan players that are now on the coaching staff over at Shen Becker Hall, guys that have played in these games, won these games, and they understand what it's really about. And so I think that's a huge benefit for the, for Wolverine Nation, just as far as these having these these position coaches able to feed into their guys what these particular situations are about. Not just because it's Michigan, Michigan State. It's because I've been there. I've played in it. You know, I understand the ramifications, how these games can truly affect the season and the culture down at the building. So um, I just want to tip my hat to those former players that came back and that are continuing to pour into these young guys wearing the wing tail. It's, it's going to come down to this defense making plays, you know, on that front line. Simple as that. Uh, we're going to lean on them. You can say it's not going to be an easy game. It's not going to be a eight, nine possession scoring game, you know, where J.J. won't play in the fourth quarter. It won't be that, you know. But if it is, 
Let's go ahead and hang 60 on them, too. Go blue. And that's it for this week's episode of Under the Wings Helmet. Thank you to our sponsors, Jabs Jim and Juke. Also, be sure to check out Under the Wing Helmet merchandise at ASAPElite.com. Come back next week where we preview the game versus Purdue. And be sure to listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and the Believe Podcast Network. You can also watch us on ASAPElite.com and the ASAP Elite YouTube channel. For Thomas Gwines and Rob Penn, I'm Kyle Simmons. Go Blue. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, hey.